if you keep on saying to yourself failure, it might be good for you to rephrase that into a different word so that it's not you're not having that association. If the word failure to you gets you really into a negative spiral. Because if someone, for example, if someone says failure to you and you go into kind of you know melt down for a week and can't get back out that's going to affect your business and so maybe take the word failure and say how can i switch that into a different word welcome to the fitpreneurs the show that will help you flex your business muscles so you can make more money and live the life you really want no more complaining whining of being a whip, it's time to pump up your fitness business and push yourself beyond your comfort zone. So no girly man or lazy ladies allowed. It's time for me to do some push-ups and turn things over to my friends AJ Roberts and Simon Lovell. Hasta la vista. Hello everybody and welcome to episode 1, 2, 3 of <laughs> The Fitpreneurs. Do you know what AJ? I, uh, I did... Uh, French at school and uh, that's as far as I can go so I'm glad that I did that on episode three you know what I'm saying you know it's funny about that is I also took French I actually got an A in that class and as uh, as you might know Grace is uh, French Canadian and I can speak no French at all even the words I thought I could speak uh, make no sense and uh, she constantly corrects me when I think I'm being clever and saying something sweet. But uh, when you said un deux trois there, all I could think about was menage a trois. And um, I'm not sure we want to get into that, but uh, you threw me off at the beginning here. <laughs> so, hello everybody, uh, je m'appelle Simon Lavelle, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, welcome to The Fitpreneurs, the, uh, the, the show which is uh, helping you to supercharge your fit pro career, whether you're new, whether you're existing, or whether you just love us and or actually really don't dislike us and just really don't like listening to what we have to say or uh, advise, which equally is fantastic. So Right. I mean, they say, they say unless you've, you, you haven't made it until you've got your haters. So hopefully we get our haters pretty quick here and, uh, <laughs> and get the, that uh, making it out of the way, right? Well, I'm not going to uh, promote that I, you know, that kind of thing. But yes, absolutely. I totally agree. So um, <laughs> anyway, on to this show today episode three aj what we got coming up uh coming up today we're going to finish up the 18 laws of being a successful uh, fitpreneur in episode two we covered the first 10 laws and today we'll be diving into the the last eight laws so you can be a successful fitpreneur and rock it in the business world aj what has been happening in your week this week the week of aj roberts <laughs> this week's been hectic, uh, getting ready for Underground next week, heading out to New Orleans. We've got about 500 entrepreneurs coming out there to learn uh, the latest uh, online strategies. We bring in speakers from all around the world, uh, averaging seven, eight figures in their businesses. And they, they're they typically not selling how to make money products. They're out there selling real products, whether it be physical or digital, through online methods, Amazon, YouTube, um, you know, other other secret stuff that uh, no one really knows about, and we get them to uh, spill spill the beans. They're not the typical speakers either. Most of them have never spoke, or if they have spoke before, it's uh, very few and far between. And so they're not professional speakers. They have nothing to sell, and it's just a pretty much a pure content seminar. Is uh, you were there last year? and uh, can attest to that so we're, we're getting ready for that we got some it's our 10th anniversary so we have some big plans big parties planned and uh, everyone's been getting their costumes ready for the masquerade ball and uh, went this week and uh, got, got a tuxedo and cool. you know with my body weight changing so fast for this bodybuilding show here haven't been able to buy anything because every week my you know i'm dropping another pant size or so so waited till the last minute uh, go rent a tuxedo for next week nice. for, the, for the ball and things like that. So that's been my week and uh, just been crazy busy, you know? How about yourself? Well, before we come on to that, you just reminded me about uh, the the underground, which I spoke on stage at as well. And uh, you reminded me of the masquerade ball where I was dressed in a morph suit, if you remember. Talking of small packages on display, I had this uh, I had this big green morph suit on and it was absolutely hysterical. Anyway, I posted some pictures on Facebook and I had a few comments because uh, of, uh, you know, well, AJ, you're equally wearing skimpy you know, underpants at this time for the for the bodybuilding show. So, you know, I know Grace is keep capturing that and posting it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know. 
So Underground is a great, yeah, Underground's fantastic. What's been happening uh, in my week? Got myself a Porsche this week, so I'm super excited about that. Um, and just been kind of... It's about time. Been driving it around all the place, and yeah, that's been good. I've been working with my clients, been... Um, I've got a program called uh, Fit Pro Mastery, and so did a webinar this week on how to get to 5K as a personal trainer, even if you suck at marketing and sales. So really enjoyed that, doing that live. Actually, did, did it... St- um, I, I don't, I'm not sat at one at the moment but I've, you've probably heard of like stand-up desks right and, and there's other people that have them I know that there's a few uh, of your friends that have stand-up desks but I don't have one so I decided to create a stand-up desk for the webinar which was actually just on a cow print ironing board and it actually worked really well I should have actually done it for this show but just goes to show what you can create from nothing if you decide yeah well it's early over there today. We're filming um, early my time, so I'm guessing you're not in your onesie yet. So you're not quite the end of the day, right? No, no, no. This is uh, I don't have a daytime onesie, just nighttime. So I think this is the first episode we've recorded with you not in a onesie, and I'm not I'm not in mine today, even though it is the morning because Grace put it in the wash. So this morning I had to go with uh, sweats and a sweatshirt. And this, thank goodness that the dogs haven't ripped it apart yet. I know um, <laughs> we've uh, we've lost one or two onesies to the to the to my dogs before so uh these ones though uh these ones seem to be uh left alone so that's good moving on so joke funny story of of uh this episode and actually uh it's i wrote down the the joke for this this episode and it refers to when i first started as a trainer again and it actually happened strangely similar thing happened this week when i was training i was on the rower the weirdest thing happened i was going and i was going at pace because it's the last 500 meters and i was like i I started to speed up there was a couple of females either side so i was more motivated to go even faster on the rower and then suddenly both of my feet came out of my (laughs) out of my trainers and and my feet hit the floor and my trainers were still left in the clips no way no, and it was it was completely bizarre. And of course, I then started to go, oh, that's re- you know that's uh, really embarrassing. And you know, God, what chance is that happening? As, as the girl just kind of uh, tried to uh, refrain from laughing. Um, and and this and actually, <laughs> the reason I say that story is because I was going to tell the story of when I originally started as a trainer. But in the previous episode, I spoke about the the embarrassing moment in the in the studio where I. Uh, to start, uh, decided to drop a few f bombs and it went through the mic. Well, in one of my very early sessions as trainer, I was showing a, a little old lady how to use a rower. Sat myself on there and uh, basically started to pull back on the rower and didn't actually put my feet in. So I basically fell pretty much head over heels off the back of the rower in front of other trainers. So it wasn't, you know, everyone's got to go through these things. AJ, do you have any? funny experiences where you've kind of done stuff in the gym where you've you've been like oh i really hope no one saw that uh yeah so we use a lot of uh accommodating resistance with our training methods and which are basically these big giant elastic bands as some of you probably are, have seen before and uh you know when you're when you're loading them onto the bar you're just stretching them pretty far and when you're taking them off you kind of have to do both sides simultaneously otherwise it can create quite the the catapult but we also use them for like accessory exercises like tricep push downs and things like that and the other day i had uh, thrown one of the bands up over the top of the power rack and uh, i was doing band push downs and i hadn't choked it or or tied it on anyway i just had looped it over so i'm doing these band push downs and all of a sudden uh, it must have edged its way to the very edge of the rack came flying down whipped me in the face, slapped me on my stomach, and basically just totally obliterated me. And, uh, you know, I'm looking around seeing if uh, if anyone had, uh, had seen that. And there's a few people kind of, you know, turning turn their head as if they they hadn't seen it, trying to hide their laughs. But, uh, yeah, that wasn't the uh, the proudest moment in the gym this week. Nice. Uh, and actually, just it uh, just gave me this crazy idea, which I, we're, I think we're going to bring in right this second. We've got our stories, but, hey, they're only limited because there's only a limited number of crazy things that have, have happened to me and AJ over the years. So this is what we'll do. Guys, if you've got a funny story, story that you want to share which you don't mind us reading out your name and you know which uh, maybe gym or area that you're in uh send us in your funny stories of the things that have happened to you embarrassing moments and um if we uh, read them out on the episode we'll send you a uh, very awesome uh, blue fitpreneur t-shirt just make sure you send us um your 
um, address and details. And so you can, uh, I would recommend what you do is head over to the Facebook page, uh, which is, let me just triple check the address before I get it wrong. I know this is awful, but I just don't know off the top of my head. There you it go. says Facebook slash Facebook printers. <laughs> Okay, facebook.com slash fitpreneurs and send us a message on there and just tell us just obviously we'll know your name, your address and then if we read you out in a future episode, you will get yourself a t-shirt and we'd really love it if you could take a picture of that. Doing something stupid and maybe cocking up in the gym would be awesome. No, just joking on that. Okay. Yeah, so basically if you're down for letting us embarrass you and uh, <laughs> make fun of you, then uh, you know, send in your stories. But in all seriousness, you know, we love hearing about that stuff and, uh, and, uh, and it's what brings us all together. You know, we all have these stories and, and uh, you know, that's what we found, me and Simon, the more we, we talk about stuff. You know, a lot of times we feel like we're alone in, in our journeys and in our, tr- you know, training and business and all this kind of stuff. And, and when you start talking to other people, you realize that uh, everyone pretty much has, a, you know, a similar story or something just as embarrassing or just as big as a failure. And so it's always cool to share this stuff and look back and laugh. And, uh, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, then, uh, you know, you really should look at what's going on. You know, you should be able to make fun of yourself and, and learn and grow from it. So send in those stories and uh, we'd love to read them out. Definitely. So in the last episode of The Fitpreneurs, we covered the the beginning of the 18 laws of being a successful fitpreneur and in this episode we're going to complete this series by doing the last laws and so AJ is going to kick this off with law number 11 which is be willing to sacrifice now for future benefits. Yeah, we'll see if you can get the laws right this week. We're all over the place <laughs> last week with the numbers. You know, there's there's more than 18 laws. We probably could have come up. We could have keep going and keep going. But these are what we felt were the uh, most important. And as Simon said, law number 11 is uh, be willing to sacrifice now for future benefits. And this really comes down to delayed gratification versus short-term rewards. But we see a lot of trainers, and, and we've, we're guilty of it ourselves, where a lot of times we'll make decisions based on immediate return on investment, so to speak. And we'll figure Forget about the long-term investment, you know, and, and the old saying, reap what you sow. And you have to lay the seeds down in order for, you know, the, the plants to grow and to prosper. And so you have to invest now to prosper in the future. And we kind of look at it like, you know, if you if you want to go back to just say training in terms of your training, you know, if you're trying to create a certain body, whether it be, you know, a bodybuilder, whether it be weight loss, you know, there's a lot of sacrifice that goes in to get to that end result. And it's the same with business. Um, you have to be willing to sacrifice. And so, uh, you know, you, maybe you want to get to a, a point in your company where, you know, you're training a select few people. Maybe you're training one or two hours a day. Uh, you're running the business. You have other trainers working for you. Well, that's very well, but we can't start there. You know, you may have to put in 18 hours a day to get your business to where you need to. If you're training people for 10 hours to pay the bills and you're not spending any time on the business to grow it, then you're going to have to find that time. And we all have, you know, essentially each day has 24 hours. And the, the truth is you can sleep less and uh, invest now for the future. And yes, it's not fun always in, um, you know, in, in terms of, you know, you'll be tired and it will wear on you. But the truth is, is if you're willing to do that and you're willing to hustle, you know, you're going to outplay the, the, the competition, so to speak. And I always, you know, tell people this all the time. You know, the crazy thing is a lot of people don't set ad- audacious goals. They don't, they don't stretch themselves. And the reason for that is, is, is they're comfortable where they're at. But what's funny is, is those that do set these crazy goals and go, go all in and go for, you know, the biggest ideas and, and everyone thinks they're crazy. The truth is there's less competition for that because no one else is willing to do it. So if you are willing to sacrifice now, it will come back and, and you will, you know, have everything you want in the future. So keep that in mind as you move forward and you know let us know if if you've done that and you've you know created a business we'd love to hear about it or if you're going through that right now you know we'd love to hear about that too so definitely and the first step is uh one of the first steps might be for you if you're listening might be just listening to this podcast on a regular basis and just investing that extra time and you know the fact you're listening now is is awesome but you just need to feed yourself with more and more kind of you know yes information on how to become a better trainer but if you equally work on the business side too then you will reap the rewards you know if you if you suck at sales and you study sales and you're going to get better at it if you suck at marketing and you and you study it more you're going to get better at it so focusing on the uh, the weak areas and building those up in parallel with the other things that you're you're learning to become a more qualified trainer so that you can you know serve at a different level is going to really uh, help you in the future great law number 12 law number zig. 12 so <laughs> zig when they zag 
So this is all about standing out from the crowd, okay? And you just do not want to do what everyone else is doing, especially when your gut tells you to run in the opposite direction. And so you see a lot of the time in the gym environment and trainers just, they running the same formula. And if you always, if you run the same formula as, as someone else, you're always going to get the same results. So for example, you know, we're doing podcasts and this is, you know, typically different from what, what most people do. And so if you see lots of other trainers putting leaflets out there, what about doing some articles and providing value instead of pitching a service? And so there are a, a whole host of ways that you can change the direction of what you're doing in your business. And so it's easy to want to copy what other people do because you feel that they're getting the results, but more often than not, you think that they're getting results, but actually they're not where you think they are. And so when you change direction, you can actually get the results that you want because you've, as the uh, law 12 states, you're zigging when they zag. Yeah, you know, and just to add to that one thing, uh, too, is if you're a copycat, you know, we law number one was you know, be first to market. And then I think, uh, you know, law number two was if you can't be first, create your own category. So if everyone is doing a certain, let's say, transformation contest, let's say everyone in your area is doing an eight-week transformation contest and you do an eight-week transformation contest, the, the thing is you just look like everyone else. And so, you know, you want to stand out from the crowd. And that's really what it's all about is just separating yourself from the pack, owning like we talked about in the last episode, owning your space and being that expert. And you, you never see experts just, you know, jumping on the bandwagon and doing the same as everyone else. You have to be slightly innovative in a sense, not necessarily create something brand new, but maybe if everyone's doing transformation challenges eight weeks for weight loss, you do something completely different. Maybe you do you know, a contest, maybe you do something like that. You can use this, this, the ideas from that that are so successful, but, you know, add your spin, add your twist, be unique and stand out from the pack. Definitely. Law number 14 is AJ. <laughs> 13, 13. Oh, God, let, let's not even have numbers for the laws. <laughs> <laughs> tell you, you get to learn to read here. Uh, law number 13. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. 80-20 rule. So the 80-20 rule says that 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts and 20% of your results come from the other 80%. Okay? So... This is this is a universal law, and crazily enough, it pretty much applies to anything we want: sales, marketing. Basically, eighty percent of of what you get it comes from twenty percent of what you put in. So if if I, if I read twenty percent, if I read eighty percent of what's on this in front of me, I'll get I'll get all of it wrong, basically. <laughs> So when you look at your clients, probably twenty percent of those are your best clients. You know, out of the out of your, out of clients, twenty percent are your best clients. Twenty percent bring your referrals in, you know, and then and that makes up the eighty percent of the results. And so, you know, with this rule, basically, you know, focus in on that twenty. The more you can focus in on that twenty percent, the bigger the rewards going to be. And you know, sometimes narrowing that focus down to the, that twenty percent that is bringing you the biggest results, whether it be referral contests. If you're looking at your marketing strategies, that say you you got ten things going on, and out of those ten things, two of those things are bringing you eighty percent of your clients, then you probably want to do those two things a little bit more often. And so um, that's what eighty twenty rules all about. It applies everywhere, and uh, just start being aware of it, start looking at it, and you'll see that it crops up everywhere in your life. Definitely, it's worth looking back at you know last year and saying you know where did the majority of my clients come from or you know in, in my case you know last year webinars were my biggest income generator and so if you look back at, um, at what you did last year sometimes and I think this is a really important point is uh, sometimes we want we want to steer in a new direction because it's shiny where actually if you follow what you did originally you'll get the, the you know you get really good results from that. Absolutely. I'm not even going to talk about the numbers now, AJ. You just you just do this bit. <laughs> <laughs> Law number fourteen: Be flexible. Things change. Uh, you know, success is not a linear path. It's a roller coaster. There's highs, lows, and you know, eventually the goal is have to have, to have more highs than lows. And Simon, I know you've had you know a lot of experience with this. And uh, you had to put a lot of trust into it. So I'll let you dive in a little bit here. Yeah, I mean, blimey. Who was the guy who chatted at Underground last year about the roller coaster? Because he has a great book. Do you remember his name, AJ? Um, this does the... Uh... Chip, Chip Collins. Yeah, so he was talking about, you know, being an entrepreneur is all about 
it being a roller coaster and so you're going to get the high days you're going to get the low days and i have definitely had a path of being successful having a lot of income losing it all because of a negative path that i went down and then becoming successful again and having even more than i did when i kind of lost it so just understand that even if you're in a dip right now then you are going to go back up but those that are successful know how to pick themselves up when they've been knocked down and it's the speed in which you can pick yourself up again which will determine how 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 more successful you're going to be than the following time so you know there may be people listening to this podcast who are at the moment they're at a really good place with their business or maybe you're on a dip going down the other side so just understand that it comes in waves it goes up it goes down aj will tell you this i mean we, we chat all the time and some you know we we're there to pick each other up and speed the process along we we, we have bad days we have good and we what we try and do is support each other through so that we can have more good days than on the negative side right absolutely you know and that's the thing is is it's so hard sometimes to focus on what's you know happened in the past and the success you've had and and we talked a little bit about that last week in terms of uh, you know reversing the gap and looking back of where you've came from and where you're at and and it's you know when you're living in the moment and living in the now and each and you're, you're focused on each day a lot of times your emotions and your feelings are attached to whatever is going on and so you have to really detach from that and know that everything is going to work out and know that this is just part of the process and instead you know a lot of people will freak out and they you know they get worried and they say you know I haven't bought any clients in this month and you know the gym is is suffering but you know we go back and we look at last month we look at the month before we look at the six success we have and understand that you know as long as we keep hustling keep working keep sowing the seeds you know it's going to prosper you're going to flourish and grow and the business is going to survive and so i think that uh, you know it's always important to stop take check of where you're at and realize that everything is okay and that this is just part of the process It's part of being an entrepreneur because that's just the journey you know it's the journey you're on it's not a straight line and uh, you it's up and down and up and down and in left and right and you know, some people get there quicker than others, but those who are persistent, those who stick the course and committed will always get to where they want to get to. Part of the reason why clients come and hire me is not just for the information, is to be around others that want to be successful. And having your making sure that you have your own support network of people that support your dreams and pushing you is really important because if you're around for example other trainers and they're of a negative mindset and they're kind of i've been in a situation before i've been doing my thing and people just want to sit around and and talk about you know people don't want to people haven't got the money to spend there's no clients coming in and you can easily get dragged into that mindset you can easily get dragged it's just like sitting in front of a tv or reading the daily mail every day they just talk about negative things and it's you know the things that go in your mind are going to influence your decisions. So input material in through, in through your mind affects the decisions you make, affects the outcome that you generate. So, you know, you can change, you know, that roller coaster going up, up and down. You can change its path and have it more upwards if you are around those that support you. Yeah. And going back, the guy who spoke last year at Underground uh, wasn't uh, Chip Conley. It was Cameron Harold. He's a former CEO of uh, 1-800-GOT-JUNK. And uh, if you guys want to look up his uh, entrepreneur roller coaster, uh, you guys can Google that. He has a great talk on TEDx as well. So His book is called, if I'm looking at it right, it's going to be two sex. <laughs> Running off there to, to his... Uh... This, I like this because this is like literally like I had to go and get my book. Yeah, so it's called, the book's called Double Double. And it's by Cameron Herald, and it's uh, how to double your revenue and profit in three years or less. There you go. Cool. Okay, so on to law 242. AJ, keep your e ego in check. Yeah, law number 15, keep your ego in check. And what we mean by this is, you know, you have to always realize that, you know, you are not the most important person in the world and that you're there to serve others. OK, and we see trainers as they grow their businesses, start to forget where they came from, forget what they learned, you know, forget the relationships they built with their clients, you know, as they remove themselves from training, forget what made them such a great trainer in the first place and what built their business. And so we see this from from a lot of trainers who 
get what many would consider to be successful and then they kind of you know break down because it's not everything they thought it was going to be and a lot of this comes from our ego and it comes from the attachment we place on material things it comes from the attachment we place on you know feedback and and getting the approval from others and so you know if we can control that ego and uh, you know make sure that it's in check you know leave it at the door always and just basically you know treat everyone how you would want to be treated uh, serve as as big as you can and never forget where you came from it will do wonders for your business and uh, you'll you'll grow and you'll build something just absolutely magnificent so law number 15 is keep your ego in check and really all we mean by that is just don't get too big for your britches definitely and that can also be in direct relevance to how many testosterone boosters you're taking to so keep that in check <laughs> no but on, in all seriousness you know just uh, you know especially I, th- I i want to talk about social media because that's where egos can really get out of check when people start bitching at each other just focus on your clients focus on getting results that's how your business will build up all the negative energy that you put out there because you want to be be competitive when you want to you know put someone in line by you know putting you know being forceful with your point of view it's just all negative energy and so if you can uh, focus on your clients give get them awesome results and you're serious about building your building your business then that's how it will grow absolutely law number 16 embrace failure okay so do not be afraid to fail okay this is actually a quote from uh, stanley judd okay don't be afraid to fail don't waste energy trying to cover up failure learn from your failures and go on to the next challenge it's okay to fail okay and if you're not failing you're not growing it's a great quote and uh, another quote we have for you here is from uh, Napoleon Hill. And, you know, Napoleon Hill is the, the author of uh, one of the most famous uh, business books, Think and Grow Rich. And if you don't have that book, you definitely should should get a hold of it. But uh, the quote we have here is, every, every adversity, every failure, every heartache carries with it a seed on an equal or greater benefit. And, you know, this, these two quotes just basically sum up the whole law here. Fail, fail fast. And uh, you'll learn from it. You'll grow from it. And and what's funny is, is I don't think there's any successful entrepreneur, businessman, you know, fitness business owner that hasn't had some form of failure. I know I've had my fair share, Simon. I'm sure you've had yours. But it's it's not about the failures. It's about how you get up from the failures. And you know, I love that song. I can't remember who it's by, but you know, I, I get knocked down and I get up again. Um, that's one of my favorite songs. And uh, you know, it's all about bouncing back. And, and doing it as fast as possible. Definitely. And if you uh, if you guys have got some post-it notes, um, it's good to like make little post-it notes to remind you so that when you kind of looking at your monitor, you know, you've got little reminders of stuff. It's worth writing this down, okay? Failure equals data, okay? If you look at a supposed failure and look at the metrics and the figures, then you can adjust it and then make tweaks so that it isn't a failure. So for example, if you're not getting clients or you're not closing sales, okay, we look at the data and go, what needs to change as opposed to going, right, I wasn't able to close that client. Therefore, okay, I'm, you know, they don't have any money. Okay. So here's an example, you know, you may, uh, you may talk to five people and they may say no to investing with your training. Okay. Now you could go, well, each one of them had no money. Now that creates a bit of a problem because now you're on the path of thinking that everybody has no money to spend, where actually it's probably more down to how you build value and whether you are able to close somebody. I mean, it's a lot more than that, but as a basic outline. Okay. So we need to break, when I'm working with my clients, I need to break everything down into, and I just look, ask for the data. So when they think they're failing, I say, okay, give me the numbers. And so, um, it's really worth writing that, that little thing down. Failure equals data. And also another thing is to, if you keep on saying to yourself failure, it might be good for you to rephrase that into a different word so that it's not, you're not having that association. If the word failure to you gets you really into a negative spiral. Because if someone, for example, if someone says failure to you and you go into kind of, you know, meltdown for a week and can't get back out, that's going to affect your business. And so maybe take the word failure and say, how can I switch that into a different word? Yeah, it's all about it's all about reframing, you know, it's all about looking at it from the positive and not the negative. What's the lesson here? What can I learn from this? And, you know, it's easier said than done. We understand that, you know, when you're in the moment and, um, you know, let's say, 
one of your trainers leaves and takes 20 of your clients with you, uh, with them, sorry, uh, you, you may be down, you may be bummed, you may be wondering what the heck happened. But when you look at the positive in it, you say, okay, well, one door closes, another door opens. What's the lesson here? What do I need to learn? What do I need to put in place? You know, was I too disconnected from the business? You know, if, if 20 of my clients left with my trainer, that's because they don't know who I am. And I, you know, wasn't keeping my trainer happy. And so you can, you start to work backwards essentially and give yourself a new game plan to move forward and so there's always a lesson to be learned and that's the beauty of failure is we can always we can always come back stronger and you will come back stronger each and every time definitely um law number 17 leverage trends okay it's worth asking yourself the question what are the masses attracted to right now and what is the mark, market sophistication. And uh, I know, AJ, uh, you know quite a bit about this market sophistication. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So basically, you know, earlier we said you know, law number 12 was zig when they zag. Okay. And this is about separating yourself from the crowd. But that doesn't mean you want to ignore the trends that are happening in the marketplace because typically trends happen based on the sophistication of the audience. And what that means is, you know, and uh, I'm going to use organic and grass fed as a great example here. And I may have done it um, in a previous episode, but essentially five years ago, if someone had talked about organic and grass fed, you would have had to go to a hippie shop to buy this stuff. I mean, it was ridiculously expensive. There were specialty stores that you would have to go to. And maybe in the UK, Simon, it's still that way. I'm not sure if you guys are, are quite, you know, as pu- this is being pushed as big over there. But over here now, you can walk into a regular grocery store uh, here in California and they have grass fed food. You, you saw that when you were here. We have bison and lamb all in the regular grocery store, not a specialty store, not, you know, one of these high end um, places that can cost you an arm and leg. Regular grocery store selling, you know, Grass-fed steaks, grass, grass-fed beef, you know, orga- uh, you know, free-range chickens, and all all that great stuff. Okay, so the right now the, the word organic, grass-fed, is just as hot as it was when fat-free and no calorie and all those things came out in the past, right? So you know, people are buying this organic, this grass-fed. It's kind of like a trend now. In five more years, I mean, essentially, it's going to say meat the way it should taste. And all meat's going to be like that, right? The marketplace will get to that. And so in terms of standing out from the crowd, you'll have to create – there'll be a new buzzword that they'll be using, I'm I'm sure. And you see this in in the marketplace. Now, in terms of fitness business, if we look at the way the training industry has gone, we were at one-on-one training. Then we were at small group training. Then we were at boot camp training. Now we're going back to a small group training. And I'm sure one-on-one training will come in hot because, you know, essentially, you can train, as you know, we can train a lot of people for a very high price at uh, one-on-one because when there's when everyone's doing boot camps and small group training and there's not that many personal trainers out there, some people are still going to want that personal attention and some people are going to be willing to pay a lot of money for it. So one-on-one never dies, small group never dies, boot camps never die. Now, you look at the way the, the, the marketplace is right now and they understand that hard work gets results. We see this in on the, you know, uh, the TV commercials for the for the info products that you see on TV, all the programs are you know quick, fast, aggressive workouts. All right, and we see this in the industry in terms of you know the the gyms that are cropping up and the brands that are, are leading the way right now is fast, you know basic barbell stuff, into, you know uh, complexes and and um, really intense workouts. That's the way the industry is now. We're not saying to go and jump on and, and be you know, affiliated with them or associated with them unless you want to be a part of that community. Um, those are great communities. What we're saying is, is look at what people are attracted to. These companies are mass marketing and they're selling millions of dollars of product and services because that's what the audience is demanding. Okay, they didn't create the demand. The demand was already there. And so when you look at your services, if you're offering, you know, your personal training and it's two hours, your clients may not want that because they're seeing, well, wait, I could get results quicker. I could get results over here. And again, you don't get paid for what 
you don't get paid hourly. You get paid for what you bring to that hour. And so if you can get the results in 15 minutes, then get the results in 15 minutes. Or if you can expand your services and offer things like mobility and, and flexibility training as well as the strength training and the weight loss training, and, and you can blend all this stuff and put it in a package, there's no harm in leveraging the trends and looking at what's everyone attracted to. These companies are doing the hard work for you in their marketing, but they're not educating the marketplace. They're riding the wave of where the market marketplace is and what the marketplace is demanding. And so you should be aware of that and you should be looking at how do we create programs and services and things that that mimic, not copy, but mimic the style, not necessarily the program, mimic the style in terms of quick results, your high intensity, da 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 da. And you know, not saying you have to change your core philosophies and what you believe in. And you know, there's there's such a thing as optimal training and maximal training and minimal training. And there's all these different things to do, but it's you know, are we going to show up to the market with what they, you know, basically, what is it, Simon? They they say, sell them what they think they want and give them what they need. Exactly. Right? Mm-hmm. And so that's that's the point I'm trying to make here. And actually, I, I speak to a lot of people on, on strategy sessions and they come to me and say, I've got this awesome product and it's like we teach people this and that and like it's got all of these different elements included. And I just say to them, look, the market isn't going to be interested in that. They're looking for weight loss. Okay, you can teach that when they're when they're in the door, but you need to market what the market is looking for, which is weight loss. And it's interesting what you say because also another thing that you can do is actually piggyback off of um, you know trends that are happening in on TV programs too. So if there's a, like a, a a series which is on the TV, you know it might be Biggest Loser or, or other kind of things. You can follow that trend too, so that when they're in uh, on screen, you can run promotions in parallel with them too. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, again, we're not cha- we're not talking about the, the the training principles. We're not talking about the sets and the exercises and what you prescribe. What we're talking about is the marketing, okay, and how you position. Not not the not the fine details of whether this is right or that is right. You know, we we know you're going to deliver what you believe the best is. Otherwise, you wouldn't be doing it. You know, you're going to deliver what you believe in, what you know gets results, and that's important. But delivery and marketing are two separate things, and we have to look at that, and we have to look at how can I get more people into my program so I can change more lives because I know that I have the ability to do that and so you do that by leveraging trends and I also talk about also um, fishing for the fishing for a certain fish with different fish so you know if you might be if you're fishing for a tuna you might use different fish to try and attract that tuna Right, so it's all about even though you might have your one service, which is personal training, you need to hook people in with different things because someone might be motivated to lose belly fat, and the next person might be motivated to do, you know, have, have be motivated by kettlebells, and so you, you're bringing them to the same outcome, but reeling them in with different offers and so if you're always just running the same thing all the time you need to be fresh in people's minds and so um lot, a big mistake i see trainers making is just putting themselves putting the same thing out there time and time again here's a free session here's a free session you know this is how much i charge and they wonder why their business business isn't at the level it's because we need to use different avenues to, to draw people's attention and that and that t- and that takes being creative yeah, and I mean, we could go so deep with this in terms of words that are used. So, uh, you know, let, let's say, let's use the word weight loss. You could run an ad with the word weight loss, and it will attract different people than if, if you run an ad that says fat loss. You could run an ad that says, you know, get six pack abs, and it will attract different people that you say lose belly fat. Okay, so you're attracting you a delivery on all of those is weight loss. The, your delivery on all of those is to lose weight, but the way you put it out to the market is different, and and that's what we power words and advertisements. And so if you're running an ad, like you don't necessarily have to change your offer, you just change the language in the ad, and you'll naturally attract people who want the same result but are responding to a different trigger and uh, we'll do another episode on triggers because I think we could just keep talking for another hour on this Simon so uh, we'll put that in our, our notes here and, and we'll, we'll do a whole episode on triggers and uh, you know ways to fire people up sound good that would be awesome AJ <laughs> you're getting better at that accent uh, I tell you what on, on episode 20 the Arnold impression is going to be so down I will be hired by 
big companies to impersonate him. Sweet. Maybe, maybe we'll actually, you know, Arnold is... We are connected. Um, I mean, I'm sure we're like one person away from Arnold, right? So we can get him on. Yeah, well, Arnold is, is now doing a supplement line with Muscle Farm, and I'm friends with Corey, the owner of Muscle Farm. Um, also, uh, Adam, I think Bornstein, is uh, working with him. He runs his website, and uh, he's just up in L.A. So, you know, there's a, there's probably a good, good chance. We, we may even be able to get him on for an interview. So, we'll get him on. We'll um, get him on. We'll put that. Yeah, we'll get them on. All right. So last law. The last law number 18. Is invest in yourself. You know, I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't in- invested in mentors. I've spent oh, probably £60,000 plus in learning what I know now to get me to the place. And so you you need to understand that just as much as it's important to invest in becoming a better trainer, a lot of trainers make the mistake of not investing in uh, the knowledge of marketing and sales. And so in parallel with becoming a better trainer, it's also really important to invest in yourself in in learning on the business side too. Right, AJ? Yeah, I mean, there's no better person to invest in than yourself. There's no better brand to build than yourself. And, uh, you know, we talked about earlier, I said you get you don't get paid per hour. You get paid for what you bring to that hour. You're only worth what value you can bring, all right? If you want to make more money, you have to bring more value. The only way to do that is to seek out people who have can teach you how to be more valuable, whether that is in training, whether that is in marketing, whether that is in sales, um, each area, you know, you can learn. And so understanding that to make more money, you just bring more value, to get more value, you seek people out who can provide that to you. And the quickest way to, you know, leapfrog the competition or leapfrog in, in your own education is to find the person who's already done it and pay them to learn what they know. You don't have to make the same mistakes they did to get there. Absolutely. Can you do it without investing cash? Absolutely. You can spend hours trying to figure out everything they did. You can spend years going through the same lessons they did. Or you can just say, teach me where you're at right now. And then I'll go from there. And, you, you know, the, I've mentioned before the whole 10,000 hours thing. A lot of people harp on that and you got to have 10,000 hours to be an expert. Well, if I go find someone who has 100,000 hours and learn from them, I've just got my 10,000 hours digested to me by a guy who's, you know, 10x that. I will take that knowledge, apply that knowledge and do a lot better than someone who's trying to figure it out and spends those 10,000 hours themselves going through it. Now, you know, there's lessons in, in both of them, but it's actually it's actually a lot more lot more expensive to not do it, right? It's people think it's more expensive to invest in the training, but it's more expensive not to because of the time it takes. Absolutely. The money that you'll lose between now and when you figured it out, you know, is, is substantial. And, and you really, you know, I can guarantee you that you'll get there a lot quicker if you just take, take that leap of faith in yourself. Because remember, the, the mentor's already done it. The mentor, the, the people you can hire, you know, myself and Simon, and there's, there's lots of other mentors out there. We've already gone through these lessons. We've invested ourselves. We've applied the knowledge and, and uh, you know, we've built reputations based on being able to help other people and, you know, build, build other people's businesses. So if you want to just leverage that, you can invest in yourself. Now, what we sh- there's no risk on our part because we know it works. The real risk for you is on your part. Are you going to do what you're told or are you not? Are you going to make excuses, you know? And so the risk is always on on your part. And so when you're willing to invest in yourself and you're willing to bet on yourself, right? And you're willing to go, I'm the one who's responsible for my future. I'm going to learn from them and I'm going to apply it. Then boom, leapfrog, you know? But if you're going to pay someone else, expect them to do it for you, to motivate you and to, to, you know, make sure that you write the emails and, and, you know, create the promotions and do all these different things, then it's, then it's not a good, good idea. But if you want to know exactly what you should be doing, and then you're actually going to go do it, you know, that's when the mentor comes into play. And, you know, a good mentor will motivate you and will push you. But at the end of the day, you can't, as a mentor, you can't want it more than the person who's investing wants it. You can't want them to be successful more than they want to be successful because it, it, at the end of the day, you're not responsible for their outcome. They're responsible for their outcome. And, and uh, that's, that's the biggest thing with investing in yourself is, is you have to be ready 
to move and you have to be ready to up level your life and if you're ready then there's no better way to do it yeah i don't think there's i mean there's not many people i know that haven't had some kind of mentor or coach to take them through and here's the crazy thing and i again i talked to a lot of trainers about this clients don't hire you because they don't know how to exercise okay they can go and do that okay they hire you to speed up the the, the success ladder they they hire you to train them to accelerate them getting fit them building muscle again them getting the life that they want and so if you don't have that for your business don't expect it to grow at the rate that you want it to and and it needs to be and it and it may need to be uncomfortable for you to invest when i, when I heard him hired one of my mentors he was thirty thousand for the years now fifty thousand for the year it was uncomfortable investing that and the fact that it was uncomfortable made me get off my ass and do stuff and so we've all and aj's been in the same situation and everyone i know who's hyper successful has had people push them to that next level right i mean i run two million dollar companies and i invest still in 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 the mentors you know i invest still at going to events and a lot of people would say, oh, don't you, don't you have it all? Don't you? Well, no, because there's always, you know, when you get to a certain level, you know, I want to go learn from those who have, have built a business for up to a hundred million. You know, I want to go learn from the guys who built billion dollar applications and, uh, uh, you know, taking them to the open market and, and have investors. Oh, there's always more you can learn and there's always people who can, you can invest in. And, and here's the, here's the truth. If you want your clients to give you more money, you have to understand that you know if you're not willing to invest in yourself and uh, and uh, pay a mentor, then what you're asking your clients is is incongruent with your core beliefs. Okay, so for example, you know, we encourage anyone who wants to keep personal training, you know, if it, let's say one on one. You know, I don't encourage any one-on-one -on -one people to sell sessions. It's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life, and it's a way to stay broke. Now, I don't encourage – if you want to train people one-on-one, -on -one, that's what you love to do. That's your passion. That's where you come alive. You don't have to get away from one-on-one. -on -one. What you have to do is learn how to sell people packages. You have to learn how to sell them you know, $10,000 for the year or whatever it is. All right. But you have to have you have to be willing to say this is the price. OK. And then you have to expect them to be willing to pay you like there's no ums, ahs. You know, it's not like, well, it's this much if you can afford it. Like it's no, this is the price and this is what you're going to pay. And they'll say yes, they'll say no. But if you think to yourself, well, 10, let's say you want to charge, uh, we'll say 6000 for the year, 500 a month. All right. 6000 for the year, which is pretty cheap if you ask me. If you say to them $6,000, you want that up front. You don't want to be getting paid monthly. You want that up front. Well, if you're not willing to invest $6,000 in something yourself, it's, it's, a, it's a incongruent to ask a client to do the same thing. And so think about that next time you look at your packages and you look at why am I not getting paid more? Well, are you investing more in something? Where's your mentors? And I have mentors. You know, I've said before, I'm getting ready for this bodybuilding show. Uh, you know, I'm a world record, two time world record holder in powerlifting that have you know degree in sports science been in the industry for over 10 years and i still hired a nutritionist i still hired a, a you know a, a trainer i you know so there's the fitness side taken care of i go chiropractor massage all these things all right and that's just fitness uh you know i have my finances i have uh, mentors in those areas faith i have mentors in those areas i you know um with a neil and and um works on relationship stuff and, and all that kind of stuff. So I have mentors in different areas of my life. Simon, I know you have mentors in different areas of your life as well. And so, I, you know, again, we're just beating this to a pulp here because I think it is probably, it's law number 18, it's the last law, but by far I would say this is one of the most powerful laws that we have in there. And, you know, we just want to make sure you get that message and, uh, you know, don't be scared to invest. The people you're investing in are making it their job to to show you how to be successful. You know, they're not they they wouldn't be in the industry for very long if they weren't good at what they did. And so, you know, like I said, Simon and I both mentor people and have great success. And there's other mentors out there as well. But, you know, find someone you resonate with, find someone you like what they're doing, find someone you, you know, you know, you're going to listen to and just jump in. Go, go say to them, how do I get your help? And uh, they'll probably have something for you. 
Exactly. Another thing that I want you guys to do is also just imagine two ladders, okay, up against a wall. And imagine that uh, at the top of the ladder is your your target, your goal, where you want to be. And on the left ladder, you've got being a better fit pro in terms of being a better technically, technically good trainer, okay? And on the right, you've got your sales and marketing and all the business stuff, okay? Now think where you are on the on that ladder right now. What? How far are you up on the left side? How are you far up? Are you on the right side? Okay, and um, you need to both. You need to work both at parallel. So just mentally, just think where you're at and think which do I need to work on more. Um, and uh, that will probably help you to decide what needs to be focused on. And when you've got both at equal measure start working on them both and that way you'll find your business really starts to grow so um that completes the uh the laws of becoming a fitpreneur i thought that was uh that was quite comprehensive aj if i do say so myself i know we'll have to get a cool graphic or something made with those laws on it and it's pretty good good stuff if you if i do say so myself <laughs> of course, I, I I wrote them, so I'm biased, right? Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. No, seriously though, guys, we we hope you enjoyed those. And um, if you haven't, um, if you're listening to this episode and you've skipped the first two, I would definitely recommend that you um you go back and check out those previous episodes. So you uh you know there's there's going to be some nuggets in there that we don't want you to miss out on. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Awkward pause. Okay, so we just want to do a shout out. Congratulations to uh, to Dales, who is now our first proud owner of the spanking new Fitpreneur T-shirt, and uh, there is a picture on the Facebook page of Dales sporting that uh, that that T-shirt, and he's from London. And as we mentioned before, if you want to win yourself one, just just send us your crazy, funny story of, of something awful that happened to you, and you're just really embarrassed about. It's almost like FHM, you know that that thing that you really don't want to reveal to people that you did. Just tell us, and we'll 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 speak it out, and in return, you get an awesome T-shirt. Absolutely. We want to move on to the question of the week. This week's question comes from uh, Facebook. Comes from is it Danavir Saria? Saria? Is that how you'd say it? Yeah. Uh, is that were you trying to pronounce that in a like a Spanish voice then? Well, I I have no I, I have no idea. It's a very unique name. It's a beautiful name. Beautiful and, name. Yeah, Absolutely definitely. beautiful. Anyway, the question is how would you go about making kick ass features plus benefits that would leave your reader begging to give you his money? Well, the first thing you want to do is obviously you depends on what your offer is. So if this is for, you know, a leaflet or if it's for your website, then you first of all need to know who is your demographic, okay? Who is the the main audience that you're wanting to attract because when you know that, then you are going to be able to make sure that's targeted and it's not a shotgun approach, right AJ? Absolutely. And you know, go back to this this is really a something we do in copywriting all the time, right? You know, features, benefits. What you need to do is you need to go back and you need to create a fact sheet. That's where it all starts is the facts. And so you go through and basically create a really detailed fact sheet that goes over everything that you offer. You know, what does it do exactly? What does it do? How fast does it, you know, get results? How is it going to change? And we can look at physical. We can look at mental. We can look at all these different things, maybe in the relationship or would it change in the relationship, you know, um, if you're in better shape, your know, sex drive goes up, things like that. So go through and make a, a really detailed fact sheet. And then once you have the facts, then you translate those into benefits. And you, you want to create the biggest benefit list you can. And when you're doing that, you really need to think about you know, what it is you're trying to sell um, and you know, the positioning of that in the reader's mind. You know, what is going to attract them to that? Okay, Because they don't really care about you. What they care about is what it's going to do for them. And so that's how we, we create that benefit list. And you know, we just keep you know, going through and, and looking at the, the benefits and how can we make these stronger? You know, how can we build them out? So it's basically becomes, you know, we'll create maybe, you know, 100 benefits list and then we'll dial down and maybe we'll end up with 10 or 15 or something like that that are just so powerful is so impactful and really, you know, if, if you read them and make you kind of, uh, you know, salivate at the mouth, um, they're that strong. And uh, that's how you that's how you create, you know, uh, benefits uh, that your reader begs to give you his money with um, because they read that and they're like, I can't not have this. There's absolutely, there's absolutely no way in the world that if I walk away from this, I'll be happy. Like now I've read this, I have to have what, the, what they're offering. And, um, you know, the, that's, you know, if you're selling something from a sales letter or something like that, you know, obviously if we're face-to-face with someone selling training, it's about, you know, 
rewording what they say into the benefits and things like that. So hopefully that answers that question, eh? Yeah, and uh, I just want to add to that, you know, you're going to get most of the information by talking to people and also surveying. So once you get into that information and also linking features and benefits together. So, for example, if you're working with elderly people and you want to be talking to them about benefits, you might say, you know, this will give you more. This will give you more energy that will help you run around with your grandchildren. So you match a feature with and add a benefit to it at the end. Absolutely. Boom. Moving on. Weekly challenge. Weekly challenge. Each week we like to give you a challenge to go away and do. And this week's challenge is to create your 80-20 list. So we mentioned earlier, one of the laws was, you know, 20% of what you do brings in 80% of the results. And so what we want you to do is we want you to write down all the things you currently are doing. All right. And we want you to circle all the things that actually bring you the money or all the things you actually like doing. Okay. And then the goal is to do Get rid of the 80% that isn't bringing you results and focus on that 20%. If, and, and if that means getting someone else to do the, some of that stuff for you, for instance, you know, grocery shopping, if, uh, if that's taking up a, a big chunk of your time, you can set it where they'll deliver it for you. So you can do it online and they'll deliver it to, for you and it automatically brings you, saves you time or you can uh, hire an assistant to go do that for you. But figure out, you know, do your 80-20 list. And uh, you watch, it'll, it'll change your life, it'll open up time that you didn't know you had, and uh, the results will, uh, will start coming in fast. 80% onesie, 20% rest of clothes, that's all I can say. Um, so <laughs> we're going to finish off with um, the quote of the week. Um, I found this one and I thought it's actually quite relevant to one of the laws uh, which we'll talk about and the quote is if dogs don't like your dog food the packaging doesn't matter and this is by a guy called Stephen Denny and um, this is just really about being the best trainer that you can be and not really steering away from from that and so what we were talking about earlier in terms of just you know focusing on your clients and being 100% making sure that they have a really good experience with you it's easy sometimes when we're you know we get onto the last session of the day or we've been training people for a while you can start to clock watch and we really need to you need really need to ask yourself and remind yourself sometimes why you know why you got into the industry and this this may resonate with some people on on listening to the podcast and others others not but i think it's just a really good reminder that in order to generate referrals and more business we really do need to increase the service level and whatever level you're at that right now even if you think you know my service is fantastic there is always another level i i'm always looking at how can i improve my client experience what can i do that i can serve them better and if you're not constantly on that and conscious of it then it's it's very easy to step back and step downwards instead of moving upwards right aj Absolutely. It all comes down to, you know, the first and foremost important thing is to be the best trainer you can be in and get the biggest results you can. Marketing and sales is a lot easier when you're not trying to polish a turd. And, uh, you know, we, we want you to be the best trainer. We don't want you to market crap services. We don't want you to sell crap services. We want you to be the best trainers you can be. And then we want you to transform as many lives as possible. So that's a great quote. And uh, I'm glad that Simon found that one. So it's just, it's just polishing a turd. Um, All righty. So- <laughs> Uh, guys this episode loved it so we would love to hear from you do you like our craziness are there things that we could improve on most of all we want to get your feedback so please um go to the itunes reviews and give us a little rating comment in there and it would really help us you can also go to our facebook page we want to know about your uh the list that you're generating the, the little challenges that we're setting for you uh we want to interact with you and and, and chat with you so uh, facebook.com slash fitpreneurs you can reach out to me simonlovell.co.uk um, if you're looking to uh, to build your training business you can apply for a free strategy session there or you can just add me personally facebook.com slash boy lovell aj ajroberts.com if you want to get hold of aj and also facebook.com slash aj roberts so aj anything you want to add or um mention or you know talk about next episode maybe i don't know I, that's it for me i'm good AJ is now going to go and um, smother his body in, um, and prepare himself for another uh, semi-naked photo to prepare him for his bodybuilding show. When is that? It's soon, well, right? Yeah, coming up a couple of weeks here, and that, uh, I'm actually just going to head to the gym and uh, hit, hit a leg workout, so I'm going to go sweat a little. Awesome. So, guys, uh, we will see you on the next episode of uh, Fitpreneurs, and we hope you have an awesome time. We'll see you very soon.
Guys, thanks for the killer episode. Listen, if you want to take your fitness business to the next level, terminate your competition, create ultimate freedom, buy new houses, cars, which could blow up, travel the world, or open your own gym where you can lift really heavy weights, then head to www.thefitpreneurs.com slash free call for details on how to apply for your free accelerator call. Until the next episode, hasta la vista, fit pros.